Swoop Luke is a Collingwood content creator and YouTuber. He started his channel at the beginning of the 2019 season and devotes his time to uploading match previews, reviews, analysis videos and other general Collingwood content. In True Footy Podcast 55, Luke joins me to discuss his vision for the channel, his love for the game and Collingwood's premiership chances for 2020. All right, guys, welcome back to the True Footy Podcast. I think it's 55. Been a little bit of a pause in between episodes since uh, footy's come back. Had a little less time to do it. But I've got a man on today that I've wanted to get on for a long time. His name's Swoop Luke, and he is a Collingwood YouTuber. Luke, welcome to the channel. How are you going? Oh, good, mate. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm a uh, big fan. It's a privilege. Uh, you can probably see I'm smiling my way through <laughs> Spawning my way through it already. A little bit nervous, but um, <laughs> I should be right. Yeah, nah, cool, man. Nah, I've been uh, I've been a fan of yours for a while. Like, oh, uh, I can't you. remember how exactly we met, but uh, I think it was like through Instagram, and then yeah, I sort of noticed all the cool things that you're doing both uh, on the platform of Instagram and um, and YouTube as well. And that's a part of what I want to do on the True Footy Podcast to speak to other creators in the community. So I guess to start off, mate, why don't you tell the audience um, of the True Footy Podcast a little bit about yourself and what it is you do on your platforms? Uh, so I mainly do. Uh Collingwood videos on my platform. So I started out a couple of years ago just really doing like reviewing the game, previewing the game, um, just a bit of an outlet because no one was wanting to hear me really whine after a loss. And, um, you know, it's a bit different. Uh, when, I went from crying into my pillow to crying on camera. So, uh, <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's a little bit uh, at the start very ner- uh, nerve wracking and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, pretty much what I do is just previewing the games, uh, reviewing the games. I do some music stuff as well, like um, I was going to say I'm a musician by trade, but that's uh, that's not a thing anymore. I don't do, I don't really dabble in music too much, but um, I like doing you know cuts and edits and stuff like that. Um, and I've got a couple of things in the pipelines. I want to start, you know, doing kind of like what you do, like you know, not just keeping it Collingwood, expanding out to like uh, a little bit more, so a little bit more of the history about the Pies and all, you know, uh, the AFL and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, pretty much trying to be. What did I what did I come up with saying? Uh, unbiasedly biased about the pies. That's what that's what my videos are. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I love that. That's really cool. Um, I guess yeah, I was sort of going to ask you what the inspiration was for the channel. You say you kind of used it as um, kind of an outlet for you. Is that the way you would say? It? Like you, you you didn't necessarily start it as um, did you? Were you ambitious with it? Is what I'm getting at really. And and has that changed maybe since you've started? Yeah, so when I when I started, it was started two thousand and nineteen before uh, the first JLT game, which I think was a Fremantle Collingwood game, um, and it was just really at the start. It was really um, I wanted. I had so many plans. Like I thought it was gonna, you know, I thought I was first couple of weeks. I was gonna, you know, get uh, everyone on, like try and get players and stuff. But then you kind of learn where it's like, you know, you've got to get the wheel spinning a little bit. Um, and it's a it's an area of YouTube and, and Instagram um, that I didn't really know existed uh, when I was starting out. I was kind of looking for just like I said, like an outlet because um, I watch a lot of EPL and stuff, and there's a lot of channels that do you know with Manchester City and stuff like that. Um, so I was like, that's pretty cool. And I was having a look, and there was no sort of Collingwood or team centric thing. So I thought, oh, it's pretty niche. Um, I and I I really like. I really like analysing the footy and stuff like that. I um, coach juniors at my local club and stuff like that. So I'm really about this, you know, the stats and the uh, the anal- analytic side of it and stuff like that. So, um, so I thought oh, it might be a good way to just kind of get my thoughts out there, uh, see if anyone has, has the same thoughts and, you know, uh, bounce off ideas and stuff. But like you said, like it has, it has changed from then to now. Uh, I've come to appreciate the club more now that I'm really – excuse me, now that I'm really breaking down, like, I'm watching it without sort of like a one eye, like, it's always going to happen, that sort of bias, but I'm kind of, um, just kind of breaking it down a little bit more, I'm understanding it, understanding how the club works, um, and yeah, I think it's just, you know, the next step for me is just getting a player on, or, um, interviewing someone from the club, or going to the club, uh, but yeah, so that's how it's kind of, it's just kind of really, yeah, evolved. 
Yeah, big time. That's cool, man. So one thing I noticed about you as well is um, like for me, my um, one thing I want to want to take pride in with True Footy is that I want to be, you know, kind of like the person that works the hardest. I'm not like super competitive, but that's one thing I really want. I've always wanted people to look at my channel and be like, fuck, how does this guy have the time to do as much as he does? And I've often thought that about your channel especially your instagram because what well, instagram's <laughs> one thing like i just do not have time for i don't have natural talent for it you're on tiktok too aren't you uh yeah but here and there here and there here and there yeah nice one so i guess what i'm getting at is like so, so for someone who you know clearly dedicates that much time and has this passion for the club is there a part of you that is really driving towards making this career or is it at the moment you're just focused on making the content and enjoying it or where does it sit for you yeah so it's, you know, bring up Instagram. I really started uh, Instagram halfway through last season, so I didn't have any sort of Instagram uh, influence, or not influence, not saying that I'm an influencer, but like I really didn't have, oh, presence, that's what I'm looking for. I didn't have yeah. any Instagram yeah. presence. Um, so I started off and then, you know, the old rule of Instagram was uh, when I was on it, it was like post one photo a day and, and now it's just like, you know, I was learning that you can't really do that when you're trying to cover a, you're kind of trying to be an Instagram or social media journalist mm. for people that don't have these sort of avenues for um, like the news and stuff. So, but yeah, like I take, I, I do take pride in like uh, my Instagram with the way that the content that I create and stuff. And you say that, you know, you want to be the, you want to be known as the hard worker. And that's exactly what it is. Like I'm a really competitive guy, whether it be, you know, Cluedo or Monopoly or, or any sort of thing. I always like to win, even if it's just, we bowling or something, something like that. Um, <laughs> that was just, it's just bred into me that I, I just don't like losing, you know, it's, um, so, so in that, in that sense, you always want to be the first with the news or, and that's hard because I work, I work full time as well, but, um, you know, hopefully my boss doesn't watch this, but when I go to the toilet, you know, it's not really on the toilet. It's just posting up who's injured or who's coming back from a scratch match. So, but you know, with, um, with the phones now, I use a, a program called Adobe Spark and it's just so quick with templates that you can get something up in two minutes and then post it and then that's it then you don't have to really touch it but um but yeah I really do like that that side of it and yeah you're right it's it all it is about working hard um and sorry sometimes I just I go on such a tangent <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's all right that's no, good but you, that's you're good. talking about um about career influences and like, yeah, um, yeah, Absolutely. I'd love to work at the Pies or sort of, or any other club. Obviously, the Pies would be preference, but um, yeah, I think that's. I just love connecting with the fans or connecting with with the people. And when you're passionate about something, you kind of you kind of don't have you want to knock down any sort of roadblock that you can see. And if that's you know uh, taking your annual leave to do you know seventeen hours worth of of video, so you have something planned, or you know taking a a, a smoko to uh, you know, post something, and you just got to get through those those hurdles. To if you want, if you want to be the best, you got to you know keep up with the best. Yeah, for sure, man. And yeah, you seem like a, a similar to myself in the way that you're like an absolute grinder. I would say, like, just yeah, the, your your ability to churn out content consistently. Like every time I go on Instagram, you're at the top of my feed because <laughs> even though I, I'm not a Collingwood fan, I just like I, obviously I like all your photos, but like um, your just your consistency is really really impressive. So I guess um. I also want to ask you because you're so versatile in terms of you know you just you hinted at it before you you go through your previews and your analysis and you like that side of it as well and you you're um and you also your sort of journalism where you're sort of just broadcasting what's happening with the club as well yeah is there a time where you feel like you're truly in your element across all that range of stuff is it would you say I guess you kind of said before it's the analytical side that you truly have a passion for yeah so. So it's like I said, I do uh, coach and I do like um, uh, the plays and stuff like that. When I go to the footy, I'm always on level four because um, it's further away. But I love that bird's eye view where I can see how everyone's setting up and stuff like that. But if I had to pick a niche or not a niche, a, a, a bit of what I do that I'm most passionate about is um, making the music edits. Like mm. I feel like um, I've got a really uh, like a music sort of mind where I can I can kind of picture all the music videos that I do I picture them in my head before I put them out there so I kind of know what I'm what I want to do it's just about finding the time to to do them because they they go for a minute but they take like you know eight hours to do so yeah but I feel like that's 
something that I really enjoy. Um, getting that footage, uh, putting it to music, putting it to the beat, and kind of just um, just pumping everyone up. That's uh, you know, that's just what I love. That's what I love doing. That's sick. I, I, uh, I'm glad you said that because I can relate to that. I'm not super musically oriented like yourself. I'm not not particularly talented, so I can play like all the four no, chord ahead, strings man. on uh, on a guitar, but that's about it. But I, I'm the same. Whereas I, especially when I was younger, even before I started doing this, I would picture music video cuts um, of, yes. of like highlights and um, of like highlights to um, to music. And I don't know if you're like this as well, but I particularly get a quick kick out of really good montages on like the Channel 7 pre-game or the Fox footy pre-game and like yeah. uh, all the really well edited stuff. I actually um, really froth that. So I'm glad you mentioned that because I, I just realized that about myself as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That's, and that's, it's like, um, it's like watching a good trailer. You're not going to go to a movie if it's, if you're watching a, a crappy trailer for the, that could be the, you know, an Oscar winning movie, but if the trailer's not good, it's not going to entice you to uh, yeah. go go watch the movie, but if that Channel 7 promo for, you know, the Collingwood West Coast rematch for the grand final is is, is built up enough in a in an ad while you're watching My Kitchen Rules or something, it yeah. just really just pumps you up. You go, yeah, I have to. I've got to put everything aside and I have to watch this game because I just – I want people – like uh, the latest one that I did was a song called This Is War by 30 Seconds to Mars. So I was driving home from work one day and it just came on my emo playlist on Shuffle on Spotify and, like, I'm listening to this song and it's just like – I can. You, it just. You just. I just feel it in my stomach, and I go. I go. I go. People need to hear this song, but they need to hear it as a as a thing for with the pies as well. And I knew mm. exactly what I wanted to do. I knew, and it's just. And watching that back, uh, not because it's my video or anything. It's just like it. Just, I just feel it in my gut, and I go. Yeah, I go. This. And it makes you want to. It makes you want to run out at the G and just you know start <laughs> putting people down. Yeah, for sure. I love that and. It's funny, I don't remember where I saw this, um, but I was watching some YouTube channel, I mean, quite into YouTube, but they were talking about in terms of making content, the best content that you can make is when, in their opinion, you make the viewer feel something. And that's something uh, that I really thought about and thought, well, how can I make that into my own content? And um, and that's harder to do when, you know, like a footy tipping video like I do once a week, you know, it's <laughs> different. Um, so I've tried to sort of move into that direction. I guess music videos and pump up videos are a great way to sort of stimulate yeah. that for a viewer which is great i do want to ask you as well like before we move on to the footy stuff because i do want to talk some collingwood and general afl with you um out of curiosity what is everything you're building towards everything you're working towards what in your mind is like the ideal of where you want to end up because for some people it's you sort of said it before as well you might want to meander into the, the actual industry and work for somebody else is there a part of you that just wants to make a juggernaut collingwood like um like fan platform like what's what's the end goal for you in an ideal world yeah yeah like in an ideal world that's exactly what it is a juggernaut fan platform like blue world uh i love the dudes yep. there they do it they do it really well um you know for, even for people like um you know you probably see them on facebook also on arsenal tv yep. um they're huge as well um you know Red something man. like that where you want to create almost like a a hub outside of the club where it's more a club is awesome because it's you know club driven and stuff, and the fans do get a say. But you know, with Instagram and stuff, there's a lot more interaction between fans and and creators and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that that would probably be the end goal, which is um, you know not working full time and I can I can record and and stream playing games on Twitch and yeah. <laughs> you know the yeah. ideal the ideal millennial content creator uh, dream. <laughs> That's it. I can totally relate to that. That's awesome. So, I mean, it's needless to say, uh, I mean, you can just see from the background of, uh, of your room, but if also if anyone's familiar um, with your channel, you're a super passionate guy. You strike me as quite an emotional sort of fan as well. I don't know if you'd agree with that. I guess I want to no, know, definitely. where does the passion from Collingwood, where did that start? Where's that, when did that journey Man, start? Um, I, honestly, you've asked anyone, my memory is shot anyway, but I honestly can't remember the first time. Um, like I, I watched your video the other day where you were talking about the first time, you know, with your West Coast and how you were traveling and stuff like that. Um, but I can't remember the first game that I watched. I do remember uh, back in primary school, I was a Carlton supporter for a week um, <laughs> because mum found a, a jumper. We weren't a big family. Uh, we weren't a big football family. Yeah. Um, so... It wasn't really top of the household, and I'm the eldest of um, 
of my well, one brother. I don't know how you say it. <laughs> a brother. So I'm the eldest of two. That's that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. Um, but he wasn't really into the footy. Uh, so I think I kind of wanted to just get into sport. Um, and I do remember trying to get into soccer, and it was too political for you know with parents and you know. Um, Really? My son has to play his assist, yeah. So, and that was when I was younger. So, they took me out of that, and I was just straight into Auskick. And I probably, you know, um, I think maybe the Collingwood stuff was just cheap at the time. <laughs> and uh, so, I, I do remember getting my first jersey for Christmas. It was a one of the, the OG Spices uh, Collingwood jerseys, um, which was pretty pretty cool. So, I love that. Um, and then, yeah, it just kind of just kind of went from there, and I didn't really get into it until high school is when I started getting real passionate about it with like, then you get in high school, you get your mates and, and your click and stuff. Um, and they kind of spur you on, you go to the footy with them and stuff. So, so yeah, it's a bit of a, it ebbed and flowed my love for it, but you know, now I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. So. Yeah. I love that. That's interesting. I think, uh, cause I've done a few potties with, um, you know, other, um, content creators. And I think you might be the first one that didn't say, uh, my family got me into it and I'm included in that. So it's interesting that you sort of found your journey and your love for Collingwood in a different way. I'm actually not sure how old you are. So like when you were in high school, what period was this for Collingwood, if you remember? Like what time? Uh, yeah. So year 12 was when we won the premiership in 2010. So oh, okay. I think we might be almost the same age then. Yeah, 20, uh, 27, 28 in a couple of weeks. So. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think you're a year older than me then. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, so 2010 was huge so that obviously we won the premiership and um we were graduating as well so lots of nights that i can't remember but uh that's so 2010 was really when you could start you know going out with friends properly and yep. watching the footy together and you know uh so that yeah that's when it really 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 started were you, were you a real big well, fan in 2010 that, pardon oh, i was gonna say were you a really big fan for that 2010 grand final or did it kind of start after that in terms of your true passion no no it was in terms of true, it was probably um, – it was a few years around that. So probably from like 07 yeah. it really started. But I do remember watching, you know, the 02 and 03 uh, grand finals. Yeah. Uh, so I would have been 10, 10 or 11. So I do remember, you know, uh, you know, like crying and stuff because, you know, you, you watch your team. Um, and I guess I didn't really understand it all because you think that you're just going to be there all, all the time and, and you get there a second year, you go, oh, sweet, this is how it's going to be. And then you fall off the band, uh, not the bandwagon, you fall off the wagon in terms of the ladder and stuff. Um, but yeah, so I do remember early as that. But um, yeah, so 07, 08 was probably when I started really getting into it. Well, that's good timing because uh, straight after that was a great period for Collingwood, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. I was gonna, as I alluded to before, you um, you seem like a really passionate dude. And I think that's one of the great things about your content is it's just so, so unfiltered. Like if you're really pissed... It comes out in your content, and I love that because I, for some reason, I uh, even on a podcast or a stream, I am always feeling like, like I can't really be myself. I, I don't know. I guess what I mean is I'm less likely to just scream and be like "fuck this." Do you know what I mean? Which is like what I love about <laughs> yeah, yours. Yeah, yeah. It's so it's so like true to um to who you are. How do you, you cope with the highs and lows of being a football fan? Um, you it's. It's hard to like, uh, like just take just take the other night for example against the Giants when we lost by two points. Yeah, I saw your post. So you I were was unhappy. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I was I was filthy. But then I thought I don't really record reviews straight after the game. Yeah. So I give myself time to like process it. But I thought no, I go let me record one, and so I recorded about a fifteen minute video and edited it, uploaded it, um, you know, private uh, to private, and I had to look at it back in the morning, and it was just. It was just shit ass. Like I was just so mopey. I was just so, so like I thought that might be an outlet, but you know, um, you just kind of the, the ebbs and the flows of the highs and the lows of the footy. You got You just got to. You just got to take them for what it is. It's not going to be low all the time. It's not going to be high all the time. Yeah. Um, Does it affect your day to day um, though? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, you lose or we lose at night time. It's not too bad if you lose at night. You know, you finish the game at ten thirty. Yeah. You can go straight to sleep, but. <laughs> If you're losing at a 10 past two game, uh, it wrecks your weekend, uh, you know, and, and it's just, it's just fresh. It's just really frustrating. And then seeing all the stuff on Instagram and then seeing, you know, oh, there's uh, the one phrase I hate is just 
oh, there's always next week. It's like, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> there was, you know, it was also this week. could have kicked a goal today. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly right. Um, but yeah, no, nah, it does. It, it wrecks my week. If we lose, it wrecks my weekend. <laughs> yeah. no. Nah. But if we win, nah, shit, man. True. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, the reason I ask that is because um, I've always felt like I was smart in the way I'd done this because... I use football as an escape, as many of us do. So when things, you know, in my personal life aren't going so well, I'm just like, yes, I got football to take me away from that. And that's always been really successful for me. And um, and then I noticed this about myself that when we start <laughs> doing poorly, and I'm a very blessed Eagles fan, so poorly yeah. for us hasn't been too bad. I really can't complain. But even right now, it's like for the way the Eagles are going right now, one and three is, is the time we record this. I've, I've distanced myself yeah. from it and I'm like, I'm not going to let this get to me. I'm not going to let this affect my mental health because that would be ridiculous. And then, I don't know, it just occurred to me, you know, the, with the video I made the other week that you alluded to of how passionate and yeah. like, oh, how grateful I am for the, all the memories this club's given me, 2018 grand final, best day of my life. Um, there was a part <laughs> of me that was like, I'm kind of a real piece of shit if I don't get around the yeah. boys when, when we're getting slaughtered. So that's just something that's really occurred to me in the last week, I'm just really not going to try and shy away from the, the fact that the Eagles suck. But I, I guess, how do you deal with losses as well? Are you the same or do you, do they really get to you? Um, like, yeah, you bring up some good points. Like it, it, it probably mental health wise, it probably is better to distance yourself because, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's not like you can change the outcome of a game. Um, True. or, you know, it's not like you're a part of the club or anything like that, but you know, sometimes, Sometimes when you lose, it just sucks and you're allowed to, you know, you're allowed to be sad. You're allowed to be yeah. angry. You're allowed to be upset. Um, you know, even though like at the end of the day, it is just a game. It's not, you know, life and death. There are bigger things, but, but in saying that, it's still like something that you're, you're passionate about. It's like if you're watching a TV show and your favorite character, you know, leaves or, or, or dies or something, you're still going to be upset. It's fake. You're yeah. still going to be upset. <laughs> You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So, you know, I find that, yeah, I give myself time to be sad and be angry and upset. But mm. then you kind of go, but, you know, let's look at it this way. We did do this good and we did, we can improve here. We can do this. And you, your brain starts clicking and going, finding the positives. It's all about finding the positives in a bad situation. That's kind of how I live. Everything happens for, for you know, every, I feel like sometimes everything happens um, for a reason in, in a sense. Um, yeah. And that's kind of the mantra I kind of go with, especially football-wise. Yeah, that's good. That's a good attitude to have. I uh, One thing I've noticed about myself, particularly in the last three weeks, is that I'm an absolutely <laughs> filthy loser. All right, so I guess bringing it back to Collingwood as well, uh, one thing, because you're the first Collingwood fan supporting guest I think we've had on the podcast so far. Um, I usually like to sort of dig into a topic, or maybe a historical topic, um, uh, from a fan who's got a bit of a closer perspective. And uh, one thing I want to know from your, from your view Nathan Buckley, I remember, and I, I must admit, I, this is a topic I was completely wrong on because about five years ago, um, I think, I think actually it was less than that. It was only a few years ago. I made a video, and I'm really glad that nobody's dug this up. That I made a video saying Nathan Buckley shouldn't have a job because uh, you had that <laughs> twenty. Obviously, he was a successor to Mick Malthouse, um, and then I think you guys made the finals in eleven and twelve, and I think from yeah. thirteen to twenty seventeen. You had that real long para, uh, patch of mediocrity where you didn't play finals, and th- uh, there was also some questionable, n- not questionable in hindsight, but at the time seemed questionable, like top up moves, getting guys like Travi Varco, Daniel Wells. Yeah. But from your perspective as a Collingwood fan, were you a Nathan Buckley fan the entire time, or did your confidence waver? Uh, no, nah, my confidence wavered. Every now and then I get yeah. a Facebook memory that tells me. Uh, I was posting that Buckley should be fired. So yeah, okay, <laughs> um, it wasn't just me that makes me feel better. Yeah, no, nah, like you know, it's hard because with Bucks, that succession plan was put in place because he apparently like he wanted to go to the Roos. The Roos were going to offer him a job, a coaching job, right? And Maguire yep. was like, and I could be wrong, but Maguire was like, no, nah, let's do this thing. And you know, in hindsight, I guess it kind of worked out. But there was a lot of rebuilding and stuff. And, you know, you could say that's why we didn't go back to back in 2011 because Malthouse is at the end of it. just seemed like his heart wasn't in it. 2012, yeah. we made finals. I think 13, we may have missed out or just made it. And then, you know, the next couple of years were just absolute shit ass. And then I think in 2017, we finished 13th. Um, and 2018 just really came out of nowhere. Um, yeah. And but But like you said, there was some very questionable things like, you know, 
Koiko going to the doggies because um, mm. he wasn't getting a run in the ones. And then, you know, Heath Shaw, you know, Dale Thomas leaving as well. A um, lot mm. of the premiership players, Nathan Brown. Um, and then, yeah, getting the likes of um, Farco and Wells. And you go, Wells is, you know, it would have been amazing in the midfield. But, you know, something like that, you know, four years to a guy that is just was just battling injuries, it just was bad. Management, but you can see why they did it. You can see why they yeah. brought Chris Main in. Um, Greenwood so was another one that at the time Greenwood I was like, well, yeah. that's a very odd recruit. I, even though in hindsight it was probably the, a great move, but <laughs> yeah, and that's that's exa- that's exactly right. Like they obviously know things that that we don't know. Like Main looked like a bad recruit as well. He was going to yeah. leave the next year, and now he's he just can't you can't get him out of the team. He's you know playing you know well and stuff. Uh, but yeah, I was yeah like of course you're going to want your coach's head if you're. You made two grand finals in a row, made a prelim the next year, and you drop off and you're finishing out of the eight. Um, and you could, but it wasn't just because we we're finishing out of the eight; we we're just playing poor football, uh, yeah. and that's what it all comes down to. You could justify it if we were blooding young kids and playing okay, but there was games where we were just, we just looked like we just weren't, we just weren't playing for them. And you, I'm, I'm sure um, the guys or Con- Collingwood fans will say the same thing. It just looked like. There wasn't any enthusiasm, and the boys just weren't look like they weren't playing for him. And then, you know, he changes his philosophy, changes the way he thinks. More coaches come in, more. You know, then we had that huge review at the end of twenty seventeen, um, and he gets an extension. And now it's all not rosy because we lost the grand final, lost the prelim. But um, but you can see that uh, it just it's kind of just the curves just starting to come up a little bit more. Oh, for sure. Like when you contrast, like it's. A lot of it boils down to we, you and I go for really successful clubs, so the standards are so much higher. Adam Simpson nearly got, well, from what articles I've read and certainly consensus among the fans, Simpson was nearly sacked at the end of 2017 and we won a final. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's just, and then obviously he ended up being a premiership coach the next year. There's this whole Buckley experience, and it's certainly changed it for me, but for you, has it changed your opinion? And uh, you can look at other sports of this as well on how lenient or how patient we need to be with coaches? Because, I mean, Buckley, that was four years of pretty average results. And then I would say yeah. he kind of, I'd say he well and truly repaid the faith because there's definitely no guarantee you were ever going to come out of that with another coach. Has it changed your exactly attitude? Right, yeah. I, again, I look at the re- fucking Leicester City sacking Claudio Ranieri after winning the title. Yeah, like, it's, yeah. It's just ridiculous, it's crazy. isn't it? Yeah. It's like, when you think about it, Malthouse had, I think... Uh, like I said, my memory's shot, and I'm not really good with the, all the sort of history and years and stuff, but I'm pretty sure he had sure. 10 years at the club. Yep. He took us to four grand finals for only one win. Yep. And Buckley has had, I think, nine. this might be his ninth year, and he's mm. taken us to one grand final and obviously no win, no grand final wins. But, you know, he's going to be in his, the same year as, as Malthouse was when he, when he left uh, next year. So... Wow, you kind of got to you kind of got to look at it like that as well, and there is a bit of leniency. But like with the EPL, it's different. Like the EPL don't care if the coach that they bring in has coached for four different clubs. Like Brett Radden coaching St Kilda after coaching the Blues is like something that's unheard of. They won't bring <laughs> in a, a coach that has already coached. It's like he's tainted or something. Yeah, but, yeah. You know what I mean? And like you said, if we had a new coach at the end of twenty seventeen. A new coach means a, a rebuild. We don't make the 2018 grand final. We're not yeah. in the position that we are in now. Um, yeah. So you've got to just keep the faith. That's that's, all, that's what it's all about in uh, football. Totally true. And Damien Hardwick's in, the Hardwick is another great example of a coach exactly that nearly right. lost his job. And then he's arguably the second best coach in the league uh, behind yep. Clarkson in terms of reputation. I, w- I was wary of how to ask this question. I do want to ask you a little bit about 2018, just because it's a little awkward mm. given who we go for. Um, but I want to know how you reflect on that season in hindsight. Now, obviously, you had a heartbreaking grand final loss. But as we alluded to, that was the first big year under Buckley. How do you reflect yeah. on 2018? When, what, do you remember the sort of the emotional journey that was? Um, yeah, 2018 was... It was different. It was like every every game that we won, after coming from a four or five year period of just being absolutely shit ass, you know, uh, it was kind of you were kind of grateful, and then you get grateful, and then you finish the season uh, in the top four, um, and you kind of go, "Hang on a second, we weren't expecting to be here," and then you start 
expecting to win because you're playing good football and then you make it through to the grand final and it's just like um, – and you can't say uh, – you could probably ask any Collingwood supporter, but I know especially me, you can't like get to a grand final and just be like, oh, that's all right. At least we made the grand final after finishing 13th. You go, no, you want to – you want to – obviously you want to win the whole thing. Um, but like – and I know that might sound silly to say, but um, – that that game was just, you know, you go five goals up, and it's like all right. So, and and you got when I was watching it, and when I was watching it, you go five goals up, you go sweet. You know who's gonna? You don't think that some team is gonna come back from five goals in a grand final in front of a hundred thousand people? Like I know it's stupid to say because it was the first quarter, but you kind of relax. Every other supporter relaxes, and then you kick two goals in that in the in the last. Yeah, um, I remember those at the end of the first quarter. Because the boys are probably going, fuck, five goals up, you mm. know? And it's just um, – and we, I can't speak of their mentality and stuff, but it just kind of seemed – those two goals were just goals because we dropped off. Mm. Um, really important yeah, goals, yeah, it, I, I would say, exact, for the momentum. Exactly yeah. right. Oh, 100%. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. One thing that was interesting um, at the risk of really twisting the knife, but one thing that I found really interesting that Eddie Maguire said once, and I wonder how you feel about it, he was asked, I uh, might have been Carolyn Wilson or I might be making that up, asked him, how do you contrast the end of 2018 and the end of 2019 for Collingwood? So, obviously, you lost the grand final in the dying seconds, very, very close to being premiers. And then the following year, you got undone by a GWS side in a very big upset at home. Yep. Were the emotions different for you? Because Eddie said that he felt way worse after losing to GWS in the prelim. Yeah, I think... Like I said before, it was kind of 2018 was you were very thankful that True. we got there after being, you know, shocking for a couple of years. Yeah. So, and then 2019, you go, all right, we lost by, a, by, you know, by less than a kick in the grand final. That's going to be our motivation. And then to put up what we did for the prelim was just, it, it, hurt, it hurt more than, it hurt more than losing a grand final. That might sound stupid, but it did hurt more than um, losing it because, in that last quarter, like, we don't show up for half a game. And then the last quarter, it's, like, 75% us. Um, and we still can't put goals on the board. Um, and, like, who knows? We could have we could have won that by kicking five goals in the last quarter. And then Richmond come out and do exactly what they did to us against GWS. Because, yeah. you know, technically that's your grand final. That was our grand final coming back mm. from that. But, yeah, 2019, I was, I was filthy until... Um, like preseason started, that was it was just ridiculous. It was ridiculous. I, I was yeah. more angry. Yeah, I was sad. Twenty eighteen was I was sad. Twenty nineteen I was angry. That's that's, that's the best way to put it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now it's really interesting. I found when um when Eddie said that, and I, I totally get it. Like you say, twenty eighteen, it was almost a surprise. You're like, this is such a roller coaster. Yeah. That the week before against Richmond must have been. Other than winning the 2010 Grand Final, I've heard Collingwood fans say that was one of the better games they've ever seen with a, that performance against the Pies. So I guess losing the following week, there was at least a, like a bit of sweetness in that. And then 2019 yeah. was the year that I felt... I actually think I thought you guys were going to win the flag. I think I actually tipped you at the start of the finals. So I, I totally get what you mean about anger. Losing to a team that in theory really shouldn't have. GWS finished sixth. Yeah. And, um, and then, you know not a great MCG team. So I, I feel like you could yeah. have, I actually think you could have knocked off the Tigers uh, had you gone one more week. But yeah, I guess we, we will never know. But the good thing for Collingwood yeah. is, in my opinion, your premiership window is well and truly open still. Um, and I, th I think you're flying to start the season. What have you made to your club start to this 2020 year? Um, I feel like, uh, funny you bring up that 2018 game. I feel like the Bulldogs game that we played in round one was probably our best game since that 2018 prelim. Yeah. I felt like we absolutely clicked as a team. Like, I haven't seen us play that well since that 20... It wasn't a, as dominant performance as 2018, uh, that prelim. But I felt like after after two narrow losses in finals, um, yeah, 20, 2020 was going to be, you know, our season. We come out, smash the doggies, and then all this stuff happened. So you kind of... All that momentum's mm. gone. Excuse me. All that momentum's gone, and then, and then you know the thing about Collingwood was it's it was really their so <clears throat> it was really their social media team because they were just producing content 
you know, of the boys and, and how they're training and stuff. And it kind of goes, hang on, they look like they're actually taking this quarantine more, you know, more seriously than, than I would have um, if I was out of a game for three months. And mm. then we come out against Richmond, keep the Premiers to five goals. And then, you know, smash St. Kilda, keep them to five goals. And you think, hang on a second, this is looking really, really good. And then, you know, let me put up what we did the other day. But but I think that's... Um, I think it's going to be a, a tough season um, just for anyone. And, and like you can see, it's just a, a topsy-turvy season. You guys are one and three. Gold Coast are second on the ladder. Um, you know, close games and stuff. It's going to be... It's it's a gonna it's a literally this season's just a war of attrition and I think that I feel like mentally we're in the the right mindset um, our players are uh, are bigger and better than they than they have been the last couple of years um, and I do feel like I I think I've said it, I think I said it at the start of this year in a preview that if we don't I feel like if we don't win it this year I don't know if we can build ourselves up again for 2021 even though our window like you said is open. But Pendles gets older, Sidebottom gets older. Now Jeremy Howe's out for probably 12 months. Um, you know, uh, and older, those older guys obviously aren't getting any younger. Jordan Roughhead. Um, and I feel like, yeah, I don't think they, we can mentally, as a supporter, I can't mentally do it again. If we get so close, lose by another kick, um, it's just going to be it's just gonna be tough. But I think, I think this might be our year, but I guess everyone says that, so... Yeah, yeah. No, I think this might be our year, bro. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, no, it's interesting. You make some good points. Um, round one against the Dogs. That was the performance that I looked at Collingwood and thought, shit, that is, at the moment, I know it's only round one, but that is the benchmark team, the competition. It is must be pleasing to an extent how you've come back after that COVID, like you said, because, I mean, look at the Eagles in round one. We, we were far too good for Melbourne, and we looked, you know, close to our best footy. And then Nick, we take yeah. 12 weeks off and then... You know what's happened? We're looking like literally one of the worst teams in the competition. I'm hoping that we overcome that, but we'll see about that. Um, interesting, you said that about the GWS performance. Is, is it really? Did you really reflect on that and think that was really shit? Because my neutral opinion thought this is potentially a grand final preview, and Collingwood nearly got the job done on Sid, uh, GWS's home deck. Yeah, so that was. Um I, th- I think that's what I said in the in my review of the game. Like I I say that it was shit house because at times it just looked like we were too slow. We couldn't really uh, run with them. They were running through the middle and stuff like that. But then um, it kind of harks on to the uh, how I was saying with the ebbs and flows of the of the loss. You go, oh, you know that was shit house. We had fifteen inside fifties in the last quarter. Mm. Uh, we couldn't put any goals on. No one can take a contested mark. We're at our forwards. And then you wake up the next day, you go, hang on a second. We played to about 70% of our standard, or our, you know, the stuff that we put up against the Doggies, against a GWS side that had their pretty much their best team in, mm. um, and we only lost by two points. Uh, if we converted one set shot, that's it. We, we win the game. Um, True. So then you look at it like that and you go, yeah, we actually we actually are a decent side despite the loss. Yeah, it hurts. The loss hurts. Any loss by under a goal hurts. You know. Yeah. Um, I'd rather get belted by seventy points than lose by <laughs> under a goal. Like. No, you wouldn't, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I probably, I'm, I'm just saying that now. We'll get smashed, and I'll just yeah. be. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, the- but, um, but yeah, I do think that I do think that both those teams. And yeah, you're probably right. It probably is a, um, a grand final preview. But uh, but either way, they're. They're both going to go deep into September, and it was a good. It's just, it's just, sorry man, it's just so frustrating yeah. that we did the exact same thing that we did in the 2019 prelim. It yeah. was just a carbon copy. The last quarter, we're getting all those um, inside fifties, mm. and then we just have no plan B. It's just grab it, bomb along, bomb along. No one's taking a contested mark. You and it's just like it's just not working. It never didn't work out 2019, and it didn't work out the other day, but. Hopefully we just learn our lesson again. But um, yeah, I just had to get get that off my chest. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel that. I feel that. It's always frustrating. Um, like you know, whenever your team drops points. But the, I think the pleasing thing for Collingwood must be that pretty much all the major contenders this year have dropped points. I think literally the only team that hasn't lost is Port Adelaide. And you look at the opponents yeah. they've played. You're looking at Port, um, Gold Coast in round one when they were playing terrible footy. Uh, yes, West yes, Coast yeah. playing terrible footy. Adelaide, you know, uh, Adelaide. And then Fremantle um, up at Metricon there. So I'm uh, not taking too much from Port. The point that I'm making is, you know, your Geelong's, yeah. Richmond's, West Coast, GWS, 
all have dropped games all dropped um, where, where yeah. they shouldn't have as well. You kind of sort of half answered this as well, but I want to get your opinion as a Collingwood fan, and this might be your year. Who are the teams you look at and they think these these um, the biggest threats to us winning the flag this year? Oh, man, like you said, it's it's hard this year. Yeah, like I would have thought with uh, with Kelly being brought into that West Coast side, that you guys would go pretty much not all the way because I still think that we would have <laughs> sure we'd, we'd be up there too. But like you're adding a a Lamborghini to that midfield that mm. saw you take it out in 2018, and you still were good last year as well, you know. Um, but, you know, so I would have said, if you told me, if we talked at the start of the season, it would have been West Coast and, and Richmond, like, mm. or, and to an extent GWS, but now it's, like, who is it? Like, you, you're like, well, Adelaide don't play any games. You know, it, who who knows? It could be, a, you could come up against Gold Coast in the first week of finals, and they're a young side, they're zippy, and they and they do you. So, like, True. it's hard to, it's hard to know who to say. And West Coast, last time West Coast lost three in a row was in 2018. You guys won the premiership. So, <laughs> you know you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, it could, you guys, it could be a surge. So, I wouldn't, as much as you want to say, well, as a Collingwood supporter, West Coast and Richmond are done. They're not going to finish finals. They could come home. So, I, I'm still very, very wary mm. of, uh, yeah, West Coast and, and Richmond at the moment. I guess. Even though it's not looking good for you. No. Yeah. No, that's true. I mean, I think for the Eagles... My, I think they will come good eventually, but my concern is how late they're going to wait to do that because they're a, compl- a team completely devoid of confidence at the moment. It does help that we're going to Perth to play in a hub, yeah. uh, of which your club is involved with as well. So you're going to be playing yep. West Coast at Optus, and that could be a good or bad thing because you won your last trip to Optus. I remember that game. That that hurt um, as an Eagles fan. I remember that feeling like our, not our season was over, but it felt like losing a major final that week. Um, yeah. How do you feel about your club moving to a Perth hub for is it three weeks? I think, maybe more. Yeah, I think, um, I think, I think bring it on. Really, mm. like, you know, it was it it was good that um, we were one of the clubs to go up there. You know, all this talk of us not traveling and and stuff like that. We're one of the best traveled sides, as in like with wins yes. traveling. Yeah. Um, in in the AFL, you know. Um, so I think and Optus. Uh, up the stadium, yeah, up the stadium. Yep, yep, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not oval. Um, no, well, yeah. So up the stadium, yeah, I think, um, like you said, we did play well there, or not play well, we got that win there last year. Yep. Uh, and when you're there for four weeks, you kind of get you kind of get used to it. And yep. um, I think we played Geelong there, and obviously you guys and, and Fremantle. So those three weeks could potentially make or break all of our seasons. Like, mm. Fremantle aren't travelling Geelong, uh, so and so, and so are you guys. But but it, but four weeks on a on a pretty much a foreign foreign side of Australia that we don't really go to. Um, like uh, we, no one plays two weeks in, in a row in some guys interstate, yeah. you know. Um, so it is going to be testy, but um, I do love that we're one of the teams that are travelling. Yeah, that's cool. I'm sure um, for a lot of Perth fans as well uh, who are neutrals. I'm quite looking forward to that Collingwood Geelong game at Optus Stadium. I don't know if I'll get a ticket because uh, it's only half the capacity. But um, yeah, yeah. No, I'm looking forward to that. It'll be a big Friday night clash. Yeah, that, yeah, that'll be a really that'll be a really good game. Yeah. Um, it's just and it's weird as well seeing two Victorian clubs go up in WA. Yeah, and, it's, it's unique and season. Geelong's home game and stuff. So yeah, but you know you get crowds in there, so that might um, that might help a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that'll be cool, man, for sure. Well, anyway, dude, um, it's probably just about time to wrap up this uh, this True Footy podcast. It's been awesome having Too you easy, on. Too easy, man. Uh, I just want to give you a chance no. to maybe plug some of your stuff. So why don't you let uh, people who are seeing you for the first time, let them know where they can find you on all your <laughs> social medias. Too easy. Uh, so, yeah, you can search me on Swoop Luke on YouTube, uh, at Swoop Luke on Instagram, Swoop Luke on TikTok, <laughs> uh, and Sweep Luke on Twitch, so I'm gonna start. Yeah, I'm uh, gonna start streaming a little bit more, and and I've got some pretty pretty big things happening on my YouTube channel in the future. So definitely hit that subscribe button and uh, hit that notification bell. Yes, yeah, <laughs> love that. No, I uh, I'm really looking forward to that, man. As I said, I've been uh, a fan of your work for a while, and uh, obviously I wouldn't have you on this show so if, uh, if I didn't appreciate your work. And of course, I'm gonna leave the links to all your stuff in the description of this video and stuff like that. So definitely go. Check out yeah. Luke's stuff. That's it, guys. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, Luke, it's been a pleasure. Catch you next time. Thank you so much for having me on, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. No worries, dude. Cheers.